Hello, and it's time for more wild action at Bame Farm. Uh, today will be somewhat calm, but hopefully we can do crazy fun things like pick corn really, really quickly. Okay, so what do we got here? A lot of creativity. Now, I'm going to wonder, why do we have chicken grit? Um, it's crushed granite. Uh, we got our JB weld. And then some sticks to smear it around. And the best part, and we're going to take a read on the back of this. You guys may have to pause it, read what it says here. Uh, but most importantly, it says, if temperature is below 40, setting time will be longer. And it doesn't say anything about do not use below a certain temperature. It just says it will take longer. Um, we're hovering about freezing. It's kind of warming up today. Then it's going to get cold overnight. A lot of winds out of the south and southwest, which is that direction. And kind of see the sun, so that's south. So let's take a look at our rollers. Ah, it's supposed to be clean, dry, and oil free. Well, I'd say they're pretty clean, dry, and oil free. Take a close up look. That's what was there. Add some small rocky bits. And I would hazard a guess that it's about the same size as our granite chips. We'll assume it's granite. Now, I'm up in the air. But do I just re granite? this side or do I go crazy and re-granite and put some granite on the other side the other thing I could do is turn these around oh wait I don't know if those are re these might I don't know if those are reversible or not but I could try spinning these end for end to make it more aggressive if this one side's a little war well I'm gonna get the JB weld ready squeeze it on there and mix it around and I'll show you guys how it's going when we get there Take a look down, see how it's going. I got some of it covered. The black part of the JB weld um, is rather stiff. Um, and the lighter tan uh, part, like that, is very soft and flowy. Um, I'm not done with this roller yet, but I got a good section. You kind of see the grit versus what was originally there. I might, there was never some on this side, but just because there's such a big blank section here. And with this part coming around, the little knob there, um, just to put a little extra something something where it's smooth and nothing. And I don't know if that's been a little bit of welds done to the top of that, maybe, before. Um, and these small parts, I, there was, I mean, there was a big open section down there that I got. I got that all filled in. It's, it's dusty, so I hope that doesn't cause issues. Um, I'm going to fill this in. I still got a little bit up here. Up here where it gets straight, like right here, there was never any grit. I think it ended about there looking at it. Pretty sure. So... I don't know, maybe halfway. I got this big section looking straight at me, so I'm going to do something there. And hopefully, uh, hopefully this works. If it doesn't, um, I don't know. I'm at a whole bunch of JB Weld and an hour of putting some chicken grit on it. Of course, that's assuming I can get the JB Weld off to do some knobbly welds to it. So I've kind of been turning it. Um, I've been keeping the JB Weld warmer in my pocket. And that's been my stirring stick. Sit there. A lovely pouch. Oh. Now standing back there, I'm out of the wind. Out here, uh, it's a little more blustery on this side of the picker. The uh, yep, carburetor pass didn't pass tests. So, depending upon how things go tomorrow, I'm just preparing that I'm gonna might have to pick a bunch more ear corn just to make some progress here. At this location, I don't have any more fields opened up for easy access. Um, but we, a couple of dad's fields, don't have too much around them. Uh, but they'd be easy to open up with a picker. I wouldn't have to worry about running down corn around the outside. That's going to take a bunch. I have to do a couple dollops. Have the black part here. Let's see. Epoxy resins. Reaction of hydrin with bisphenol A and bisphenol F. So I don't know if the bisphenols or bisphenols. 
which one of these is which, it doesn't say. But even warming this thing up in my pouch, it's been in there since I've been messing with this. That, uh, you know, just kind of hide some of that right there to clean this up. That one of these parts does not flow very well. And I figure this has got to be much warmer than being out here in the cold and wind. And my pouch might be, I don't know, we'll say 60 degrees. It'd be a nice comfortable temperature to think about versus out here where it's about freezing or so. Here comes the lighter half. This stuff, I can, look at that. That's so much easier. Ah, get off, yeah. It sticks a little more to everything. Nobody stick your fingers there and get it all over yourself. Yeah, I still haven't tried to get the diesel TR home. It's one of those things I was hoping we could get the gas running and just kind of make that a back burner project until harvest was over. Just because I'm afraid it's going to be a hassle getting it home. I don't know, I should have bit the bullet and did that a week ago, I guess. Try to drag it home. Uh, now, on a side note, hay sales have been good. So that's the only saving factor right now. Ugh, it's so stiff, and I didn't make a good pile. I'm gonna try to get it mixed around. Hopefully I was about 50-50. It says mix equal parts. What am I gonna do? Get out of scale. It's hard to make a glop make a glop of each one the same size. When I get the black mixed in, it really makes it darker. So you can tell when you're getting close. Shouldn't be very light. Ugh. Try to peel the the black part. Come on. Now I noticed the chicken grit isn't quite as big as what was originally there, but I'm hoping it's rough enough and, um, I don't know, as long lasting or hard that it won't wear away. Now the other stuff didn't necessarily wear away, other than it, uh, just broke off the epoxy or whatever glue Ford used back in the day. It's just been chipped off the metal. Now, uh, one time I had this thing so plugged that somehow um, you know, these rollers jumped a tooth, and it's just it's it's the 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 coupling up here. I'll take a look at it. Oh, we're working and talking. Just kind of a little sleeve, and there's a gear up here, and then there's teeth on this I don't know, outside coupling piece of pipe. Oh, but the problem is the teeth, if we look where this scratch is right here at the end of my finger, the teeth are about right there, and it's blank up in this top section. So somehow it must have fallen down too far and jumped a tooth. I bought replacement of those couplers and didn't need to, so I wasted some money there. Because I thought, I looked inside, and the teeth you know, we're all, they didn't go all the way to the very end. I'm like, oh man, I sheared them off or something. Nope, got new ones. They look exactly like what I took off, other than they had some shiny new paint. So, and I did that. That was the last year, the first year we had this. Uh, should I get spread around? Being cold, it's not going to set too quick, I guess. I guess we'll try to take it all the way down to here. Yeah, I wonder what they meant. Uh, I've had you know a couple comments and read about it that Fords were champion pickers back in the day. So what does that mean? Were they fast? Did they just get the corn clean. Um, not having the grit over here has slowed me down, but it's also with the corn really dry. And the corn's not going to get any wetter unless I'm out here in the rain. Uh, which that probably isn't a good idea. Yeah. Smear it around. Get a good thick layer. 
Come on. Try to get that last little bit off the off the stick. Which I don't know. I like my old Ford corn picker, but maybe maybe if she's looking at getting something bigger. I've had uh, I don't know. With my experience, the new idea. Like, I mean, some of them have been around a while. I'm sure some have been used a lot. But that being said, if they're the most popular, they've probably been used a lot. And I'm thinking more about, like, John Deere 300s. Ugh, bad word. Um, but those have a real corn head on them. So at least there's, like, stripper plates and uh, deck plates. So hopefully there wouldn't be butt shelling as the thing's sitting here trying to pull the stock off and it's grinding away the kernels at the bottom. I'm hoping that's not a, you know, obviously wouldn't happen on a, a newer picker. I'm hoping the 300s are newer. Now, at least with a two row new idea, I don't think they'd be so congested underneath the rollers. I've wasted tons of grit. There's tons of grit down in there, unfortunately. Um, because it's hard just to get good placement. Now, if I was at home and I was taking these things off, they do come out fairly easy. The one end, they slide right off. I just get the bottom part, bottom apart and they'll slide right down. Oh, that I could, you know, spread the grit out which might result in a rougher surface rather than me using my fingers. I'm hoping I'm not making it too smooth, but I'm, I want to make sure we have good contact between the rock and the JB weld. Um, then I could just, you know, spread this out on a piece of newspaper on the workbench, roll the, the, the roller here across it and be done. But I thought it was dumb to drive this thing all the way home when there's no corn at home and it's freezing cold. Um, and all the corn that's left is elsewhere. I'm really hoping after all this work, I'm just wasting my time over here that the combine with the carburetor and we can hit the ground running tomorrow. As much as we can for only being able to pick up the carburetor probably about noon. That's when they thought it would be ready. Uh, but we got lights, grounds frozen as long as it's not raining. Oh. So yes, Ford Farming mentioned something about um, they had a two-row new idea to sell. I need to get need to talk to them still. So I haven't forgotten about you or anything. I saw the comment. Well, I think you guys get the idea how much fun it is spreading around the JB weld and putting the rocks on. I'll probably show you guys when it's over. I don't think there's going to be any like major issues I'm going to run into. And I'll have to wait at least overnight for this to cure um, because it's too cold out here. Well, back in the dark because I left the camera at the field. Kind of getting up close view of how it's setting in how well I did it has warmed up a few degrees surprisingly there's some incredible wind out of the south that I am very much wanting to go away um, yeah I put some grit on the bottom there try to make things a little more aggressive hopefully it helps I oh, got the big light lighting everything up it's not set yet I can still get my finger oh, sit sit light I can still kind of squish it around uh, maybe you can see that maybe you can't but yep that uh, it's still a little tacky but with it warming up that should uh, slow down or speed up our cure time a little bit it's still only maybe 40 degrees or so uh, so hopefully in the daylight at some point I'm really hoping not tomorrow Really hoping not tomorrow because that means our carburetor is ready to go and we're doing something else to pick it for. So we'll see you later.